The one word that you have to start with and really use a dictionary to translate is the word opportunity, which translates in the language of the Venus people into <laughs> risk. Opportunity translates into risk. You talk about opportunity and they hear risk. The reason that they hear risk is that they don't like risk. Investors are really people that don't like risk. They like to protect the babies. When they part with their money, it's already a big, big decision. And they don't like risks. Startups, on the other hand, are actually more about the opportunity ahead. As you can see, the babies are less important. And they look into the horizon. So really, that's a different way of looking at the situation. When you present your company to an investor, you look like this. <laughs> Investors are extremely well trained to find hidden risks, not only the risks that are there on the surface. By the way, it's their right to do it. You know why? Because they have so many opportunities. If you have money, companies come to you, so you can actually decide to invest in the company where you feel that there is not so much risk. There is no reason to take the risk. What kind of risks are there? In general, the first risk that comes to mind is the market. Is there a market for this product? Talking about the product, will the product work? And then we have another question, which is, OK, assuming that there is a market and there is a product, many companies will want to do it. So competition is the next issue that you need to put into your mind and to transmit in a way that makes sense to the investor. If everything here on that list is not enough, then there is the question of can you make money? This is a big risk. Many companies today are founded on the concept that the question of how do you make money will be answered by we'll have so many users that it won't be an issue. Internet companies are like this. This is not a very good answer. And then there is the final risk. Actually, some people say you should start with that risk, but given that you can do very little about it, it's the team. I leave it to the end. The reason that you can do very little about it is because this is the team that you have. These are you. What, what can you do more than that? So, yes, you can do certain things in presenting the team to an investor. I want to take you now into the mind of the Venus people, the investors, and we'll actually go through those risks and understand what is it that they really want to hear from you and how they view what you present to them. But before that, has anybody not seen the movie The Godfather? It's a classic, and it's, uh, it's a movie about the mafia. But there is a fundraising scene in that movie. In that scene, Signor Solozzo, he is an Italian, but he is called the Turk, as if he was from Turkey. And the reason is that he is a drug dealer. And he is coming to the head of the Corleone family, Don Corleone, from the Mafia, to raise funds for his new startup. His new startup is an operation of distribution of drugs in New York. So I want to um, show you what happened in that fundraising meeting. Let's see. There, Don Corleone. I need a man who has powerful friends. I need a million dollars in cash. I need Don Corleone, those politicians that you carry in your pocket, like so many nickels and dimes. What is the interest for my family? 30%. In the first year, your end should be three, four million dollars. And then it would go up. 
So I received 30% for finance, political influence, and legal protection. That's what you're telling me. That's right. Why do you come to me? Why do I deserve this generosity? <laughs> Why do I deserve this generosity? Now, think about the opportunity that was presented. You will not be able to present such an opportunity to your investors. A million dollars turns into four million in one year with 30% profit sharing afterwards. That's a very good opportunity. But it seems that somehow Mr. Solozzo is not getting it. He is not on the right track. We'll see how the meeting ended and what was the response in the end. But before that, let's start this uh, journey into the mind of an investor, starting with the first risk, which is, is there a market? Is there a market? Now, this is a simple question, and most startups respond to that. What do you mean, is there a market? Of course there is a market. Why are we here? We're here because we've built this great product because there is a market, right? <coughs> But the Venus people are very stubborn. They dig and dig and dig and dig into the question, is there a market? The fact that you are there in front of them with all your excitement and the fact that you left your jobs and you are gambling your life on that product means nothing to them. They are not convinced that there is a market. Now, the reason that they are so concerned about this risk is that they know that a company without a market is going nowhere. And you can bring, and you can assemble, a great team of people, experienced, a tiger team, the dream team, and they can go and build a very, very good product, a very sophisticated product. But if there is no market, it's going to end after a lot of work and a lot of suffering, it's going to end like this. Astronauts from NASA, a great team, in a survival game. They are going to spend all the money in search for customers that do not exist. This is what is going to happen. Now, this is the law of the market. A bad market wins against a good team. The market is more powerful as a force than anything. It's more powerful than the team. It's more powerful than the product. This is the ultimate risk. If there is no market, 99% of the time, the company will fail. However, when there is a market, something interesting happens. When there is a market, even good teams, but not maybe the best teams, with a good enough product, maybe not the best product, can be successful. And the reason is, is this is like surfing on waves. When there are waves, you can surf. Maybe you are not the best surfer in the world, but you've got a very good chance, occasionally, to give a good show. Good markets are like waves. Now, you may be the world champion competing with an amateur, but if there are no waves, you are not going to be very successful. You cannot surf without waves. So when you start your presentation to an investor, the first thing that you need to do is to talk about a wave. Startup companies tend, especially internet companies, tend to confuse the word market with the word people. What do you mean, is there a market? Of course there is a market. There are millions of people. And all these people could possibly use our product. The thing is, the word possibly, which translates into a risk of will they buy your product? Until you've proven to me that people will actually buy your product, I don't know that there is a market. I just know that there are all these people. Now, do you think that this is um, um, something that um, will not happen in reality because most companies understand that? I'll show you in a minute some products 
that you will be surprised that ever got created based on that idea. But to an investor, when you present your company, don't be surprised if really what they think about your business plan, given that you haven't proved to them that there is a market, is that you are kind of building it on the concept of we'll build it and they will come. You're going to stand in the corner with your product hoping that some people will come. That's the business plan of the startup. Humiliating a little bit to think about your company like this, but if you are really looking at the way that you are presenting yourself and how much energy and time have you invested in really proving that there is a market, you start to see that this is not a simple question to answer. Here are some products that are waiting for the market to come. This is a product for the busy executive. It's called iArm. If you are so busy that you have to talk on the phone, drink your coffee, but you still have to look and read on the iPad, this hand mount is for you. It's a very sophisticated product. You can also attach remote controls, uh, dinner plates. There are all kinds of plugins. And you can buy it in this box, fancy box. Anybody wants to buy? What about this one? Anybody recognizes this product? This is called Newton. It's a product from Apple that was introduced over 10 years ago, it was a total failure. Anybody knows how, what is the name of this product today? IPhone. iPad. iPad. That was a timing issue. The market was not there, not because conceptually there is no market, but then there was no market. Today there is a market, a huge market. It's true that the product has evolved and the technology has evolved to make that market possible, but there was no market. Even a company like Apple has failed. Here is another product. Maybe some people here will consider if they like it. <laughs> That's a real product. Finally, many companies are actually following that concept of people are going to do it. Why? We don't know. People are going to buy it. Why? Because, because it's nice, because it's uh, cool, because whatever. This product is called the pet rock. You know what is a pet rock? First, it's a pet. Second, it's a stone. It's a stone that connects to your laptop with a USB cable. Now, it's a pet that doesn't require any feeding or caring. A very, a very good pet, by the way. And don't get confused by the USB cable because it doesn't draw any power and it doesn't transmit anything in any direction. <laughs> the whole idea of Petrock is that you put it on your desk and when people ask you what is this, you say it's a Petrock, it's my pet, and then you invent whatever story you want to tell about it. <laughs> Back in the year 1980 something, this was a major hit. This was a major hit. There were many people that bought this pet rock. Over a million pet rocks got sold. Why? Because other people bought them. Now, you can buy today if you want, 9.99. This is the site, Think Geek. So all these products are real products. And as funny as they are, many startups are actually presented stories that are even more absurd and funny than this, because they hide behind sophisticated words. But in the end of the day, they haven't proved that there is a market. So sometimes, yes, you can create a market with your product. If you come with the ring that makes people invisible, I think that there will be a market. I don't know what market it will look like, but there will be a market. Very few companies can create a market. It's very, very difficult and costly to create a new market, but it can happen. Investors in general are not happy to gamble on a company that will create a new market unless the concept kind of jumps right at you that this is possible, that this could happen, it's the right time, it's the right team. So many things have to click together for this kind of opportunity to be fundable. So, 
presenting this concept of the, of the product, the next question is, there is a market. What is about the product that investors want to see? Most startups talk about the features of the product. Here, is all the, here are all the things that our product can do. To an investor, coming from a market perspective, really there is only one thing that they want to know about. And this is called product market fit. And some people say this is the only thing that matters. What is the concept of product market fit and why is it the only thing that matters? Product market fit means that the product that you are developing is exactly what people want. Now, obviously, you haven't developed the whole product yet. And you are talking to an investor with the beginning of a product. So really, the way to present your product is not by way of all the features and functions, which the investor cannot really understand because he is not a user, but it is through the concept of product market fit. Really, this is like two images. One image is what the market wants. The other image is your product as it is today. You have to convince the investor that you understand completely what users want and what you've built in your product right from the start are exactly those things. You are in the right direction. This is the concept of product market fit. As you are building the product in this way, you are iterating. You are going to change the product, trying to fit the minimal set of functionality that really is what users want. And startups are doing this process which is called pivot. They pivot and change the product. When you speak that language to an investor, here's what we've built because this is what people want and we know it and we understand it and our product shows right away our understanding of the market. Think about it for a minute. The product shows your understanding of the market. That's the concept here. Now, it's easy to know if you are there or not, by the way. Before product market fit, life feels like this. <laughs> Everything seems to be in the wrong direction. Whatever you are trying to convince customers that they should buy, they want something else. When you talk to investors, they are trained to see the fact that you are not in a product market fit, so they don't invest. Your R&D is all over the map, building all kinds of stuff that you are not sure why they are necessary, and you throw them away and you start from scratch. There are actually many people that hope today to start a company and sell it quickly. It's called an exit. Forget about an exit before product market fit. And the reason is that really, with all the great technology that you are building, you haven't proved that there is value to anybody in what you're doing. So this is not going to happen. There are certain markets, by the way, that are now struggling to get to product market fit. These are waves, but they are not there yet. For example, video editing for home users, for amateurs. Everybody can take a video with the iPhone. How many of you can edit the video? There are so many startups today that are trying to address that. It proves very difficult because the requirements of the users are not clear. To make it easy to use and still be able to do video editing is tough. Mobile payment. For 10 years, we hear about the possibility of paying with the mobile phone. Still not happening. Everything with the words artificial intelligence. I tend to suspect as having a product market fit problem. Virtual secretary. It seems like everybody wants to get rid of the secretaries. To let them go. We don't need you. But so far, very, very little success. Because to define really what the software should do that will replace a secretary kind of gets you to the understanding that maybe a secretary is not so easy to replace. Maybe what they do is important after all. And finally, everything that is too complex to be successful is replacing multiple products by one product with more buttons. Every time that you try to do something like this, it doesn't work well. It takes a lot of time to find the solution. Now, after product market fit, it's very easy to tell that you are there. All of a sudden, it's like you don't call on the customers, they call on you. 
everybody seems to respond immediately when you got the right thing. So that's the concept of product market fit. Now let's say that you got to product market fit or you are on the way to product market fit or you can at least present to an investor with those two mental images what your product is today, what the market wants and why you are really up to something that the market wants. What is the next risk that will come to mind for the investor? If this is so great, you are in a market with a wave, you are close to product market fit, competition. Many other companies will want to do the same thing. So why are you so much different from all the others? Is that you? <laughs> Tell me how you are different in a way that matters. Being different is easy. You can wear a red shirt and the other guy is blue. This doesn't matter to anybody. You have to be different in a way that matters to the customer. Now, I want to tell you that um, if you don't do that, it's as simple as that. Either you differentiate or you die. It's the law of nature. There is nothing in between. You don't differentiate, it's a matter of time until you die. Now, how do you differentiate? And especially, how do you differentiate in a way that an investor will understand your differentiation? Now, investors don't understand all the features and functions of the product, and they don't know possibly everything about the need of the user, so how do you differentiate? Let's see how not to do it. Not like this. Pony for sale looks like a small horse. <laughs> That's not to differentiate. You will be surprised how many startups eventually, in the end of the day, after taking off all the nice buzzwords on their website, this is what remains. Now, most companies, though, are much more sophisticated than that. And they differentiate with features. Differentiating with features looks like this. You list all the features of your product, and you list on the other side all the features of the competition. In this case, we are seeing two backup products. One of them is from a company called Genie. The other one is from a company called Symantec. Symantec, for those of you that don't know, is one of the largest software companies in the world. And they do a lot of security software, backup software, enterprise software in general. So look at this. There are so many features here. Some of them we have and the other guys, the big guys don't have. For example, um, even though they have incremental backup, we, on, we have backup versions and they don't. And we have restore on different machines. Could be very important sometime. And power saver mode and movie mode, turbo mode. And we even have a backup slider that allows us to go back in time. Slider to go back in time. To a customer in the market in general, and particularly to an investor, really that situation translates into this. What you are saying really is this. We are here, the other guy is there. You see those sandals? He is barefooted. You see the armor that we have? He doesn't even have a shirt, not to speak about the helmet. This is why we are going to win. That's not going to work. It doesn't sound right. You are a small company competing against the big guys, and you are explaining with that feature and that feature and this little thing and that small thing, you are going to win. In order to differentiate yourself, you have to actually transform the dialogue into something else. Something that is not features, but is on a whole new level. This is called differentiating with an idea. You want to actually plant, right from the start, an idea that you own, and you plant it in the mind of the customer or the investor, in that case, that differentiates you. That idea has to actually do a magic. And it's not actually easy to find that idea. A differentiating idea is difficult to find. But what it does, it creates a kind of a deja vu 
in the mind of the investor that reminds him or her of other good things that people invested in and were successful around that concept. You can use an analogy to something else that was successful. You can say we are like this company, but for that market. We are like this company in this market, but with a different approach. The word different approach, different idea, different concept is what differentiates you more than a specific feature. Okay, differentiating with an idea. Now, I've done something like this uh, several times in my career and I actually believe that this is the best way to differentiate yourself. In my previous company, I invented a concept, an idea around the technology and called it a black box flight recorder for software applications. You know the black box on the airplane that records the flight? When there is a problem, a problem could be a crash, but you'll be surprised. They investigate the black box after each and every flight, not only for big crashes, and then they can see what happened. So we come up with the idea of a black box for software applications that could reside, for example, on the servers of Citibank.com or Amazon.com. When all the users execute transactions and something fails, then you can actually play back in the black box to see what happened and solve the problem. That was a differentiating idea. It was a different approach. There were so many other big companies that were doing monitoring. Monitoring means discovering, detecting that there are problems by monitoring the network, monitoring the server, monitoring the applications. But we recorded the applications. So our technology was actually also derived from that idea of recording. And we had the black box as something that everybody could relate to. That idea by itself created something out of nothing that I wouldn't hope for in a million years. Somehow, a reporter of CNN heard about it and called me and said, we want to present it in our 9 p.m. show about technology breakthroughs in the world. So I was invited to speak about the black box of the internet in prime time. The day after, the phones didn't stop ringing. How much is a black box? We didn't even have the product yet. We didn't get to product market fit, but we had an idea that differentiated us, and all the investors wanted to invest. So, next one. How are you going to make money? There are so many ways to explain how you are going to make money, and what I've seen is most startups use a great product to explain how they make money. What is the product? It's called Excel. Excel is the answer to how we will make money. It shows our projection for the revenues, five years, 100 million, and the most sophisticated guys actually put a budget, a budget in place. A budget is another magic word. It shows all the people that we are going to hire. Now, to an investor, this is again not a good way to present yourself. And the reason is that investors see, think in very simple terms. They don't understand all the numbers. You need an idea. Again, you need an idea. That idea that you are after is a money machine. You want to show to an investor a money machine, a machine that prints money. What does it mean, a machine that prints money in, in a startup business? You are not printing money. But you want to take the understanding of the market and the understanding of the product to another level. You want to wrap around your product a transaction. A transaction means how we are going to find customers, how much it costs us to acquire a customer, who is involved in acquiring customers, how many people are working in that particular transaction, the lead comes from one guy in marketing, then goes to the sales guy. Maybe there is a sales guy on the phone. Maybe there is another one that is selling direct. You have to understand all the different elements of one sale, one transaction. And you dig very deep into that to understand what operation you require around one transaction. And then you go and you present your company as a company that prints money 
by duplicating, by repeating that transaction again and again and again. Great companies are very simple companies. They have a transaction that they repeat. As they repeat it, they make money. Not with one transaction, because you also have to pay for R&D and for administration and operations, but as the number of transactions grows, then you start to see the profit. So this is a tool, another idea of how to communicate the business plan of the company, and then the word budget translates into another word. Here is the operation that I will need to execute that transaction. And as I grow my company, I hire more people because I execute more of these transactions. It's a different way to present yourself. Coming to the last one, can the team execute? You are in front of the investor, you are who you are. Do you know what runs in the investor's mind when they see you? They view the team in front of them, unless you are a very famous uh, entrepreneur that already raised money, sold companies, investors made a lot of money investing in you. This is who you are. You are behind a mask, nobody knows anything about you. Now, investors, in general, don't want to invest in people that they know nothing about. Okay, it's a simple concept, but they don't like to invest in people they don't know nothing about. So most companies present the team in the beginning of a meeting, wasting sometimes up to 20 minutes on that and still doing the wrong thing. They present themselves by going through the history of work of the people, presenting yourself by naming the companies where you worked before. I worked for seven years at Intel, I did that. Then I worked for Microsoft, then I did that. Then I worked for Google, then I did that. And the idea is that by listing all those successful companies, I am creating, in their mind, the idea that I am going to be very successful because I worked for all these successful companies. But guess what? Investors don't want to invest in people that happen to be in great places and in great companies that were successful. They want to invest in people that can create great companies and make great things happen. So you need to change the way that you are presenting yourself to a different concept. You have to speak about your qualifications, about your skills, about you, what can you do and be focused on one thing which is on their mind. They want to invest in a team that is not just a good team. The team has to be with the skills that are relevant to the business that you are trying to build. If, um, if a guy is a journalist that was working in the fashion industry for 10 years in Milan, and the other founder is a mobile applications developer that worked developing applications for social networks for the last seven years, this team is credible to start a business that is a social network for the fashion industry. But if we are two guys that were developing chips for the last seven years, we are not. Even though we work for Intel and we are great and we are very smart and we know how to produce the greatest software, we have nothing to do with that area. So as you present yourself, you need to present yourself like this resume of Captain Hook. This is a different way of presenting yourself. Now this guy is probably debatable as a CEO. He has the pros and cons, like everybody else. But his skills are pirate ship captaining, map reading and plotting. He was a captain. He knows how to fight with a sword. By the way, he has one weakness. For those of you that can read quickly, he is afraid of crocodiles. But he has a good reason. He lost one of his hands to a crocodile. Now, the way to present yourself is through your skills and mapping those skills to the business that you are trying to create. And by the way, don't ever start a business where your skills are not relevant to what you are trying to build. I see actually many people that are engineers that had background in whatever discipline in engineering, they are trying to create things for the fashion industry or for the food industry or in retail for 
maybe 16 years old, and all kinds of things that have nothing to do with their skills. So at that point you are probably wondering what happened with Mr. Solozzo that was trying to raise his money from Don Corleone. Let's see what happened to him. I said that I would see because I heard that you were a serious man to be treated with respect. But uh, I must say no to you, and I'll give you my reasons. It's true, I have a lot of friends in politics, but they wouldn't be friendly very long if they knew my business was drugs instead of gambling, which they regard as a, a harmless vice, but drugs is a dirty business. Oh, don't call it, it doesn't make any difference to me what a man does for a living, I understand. But uh, your business is... Uh, a little dangerous. Your yes, not so I know it's final. And I wish to congratulate you on your new business. I know you do very well and good luck to you. I know you'll do very well and good luck to you. <laughs> now, now, Mr. Solozzo actually came very well prepared to that meeting. Is there a market? There is a huge market. Drugs is a huge market. Product market fit? He had the product. How to make money? It's a money printing machine. Does he have any competition? Yes, he had, but he was the big guy. And he had a lot of experience and a lot of connections. And a lot of distribution power. And finally, the team. The guy is extremely skilled. As Don Corleone said himself, right? He said, I heard that you are a serious man to be treated with respect. So, why didn't he close the deal? What was he missing? All of the five risks were covered. The thing is that there is one additional risk that investors never tell you about, but it is one of the most important. And actually, the Don said it in one word, friends. Friends. The deal that he was supposed to agree to was a deal where he would lose his friends. Now, friends is a word in the investor's world, a very important word. They like to invest with friends. They like to be respected for their investments. They like to invest in things that they believe that others will invest later on for a higher price. They want to be right, and they are willing to share it with other people. But what any and every investor doesn't want to do is to be wrong which is a big risk in investments in startups, but not only wrong, but also alone. Wrong and alone. So when you are presenting to an investor the words just for you, this is just for you, nobody else will invest, you are doing the wrong thing. They want to invest with other people, even if they will get only one half. That's a fundamental risk that they don't want to take, to invest alone. Wrong and alone is a big, big, big risk. So, we are ready to summarize, and actually, here is the language now, and the five elements that you have to remember as you present your company to an investor. That's how to tell your story. These are also the elements to look for when you are actually planning your company and deciding if it's a good business to be in. First is the market. The law of the market, this is the most powerful thing. You have to think about the wave and you have to associate yourself with a wave that you present to the investor and you say, this is a great wave and we are riding it. Second is product market fit. Probably you are not there yet, but you have to present right from the start that you have a very good and solid understanding of what is it the market wants and that you are building your product right from the start to address those issues. Build those two mental images for the investor and explain that you are on the right track. And this will encourage them to take the risk farther and to study the competition. You have to differentiate, differentiating with an idea, with a concept, with an approach, not with little features that you have today and other people can catch up quickly. Then you plant another idea and you put into the game another idea, which is the money machine. 
that repeatable transaction that you execute, this is how we are going to make money. It's not a business model. It takes it deeper to the level of an operation that you understand how you are going to make money by building that operation. This further shows your understanding of the market. And by the way, you will not be able to do it if you don't understand the market. And finally, the team. Present the team as a relevant team, a team that actually has the skills that are needed to build that business. Don't spend time explaining who you are by describing the companies you worked for. Describe the skills and why they are relevant for the business. Now, if you follow all these principles, then I believe you stand a chance as startups from Mars to raise money from the people of Venus to put their money into a venture from another world. Thank you.